others. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As uh, always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. No? No? Listen? Oh, there it is. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we're back to flat after being down, uh, what, uh, 35 points on the S&P cash. Uh, certainly looked like we were coming into a low from options uh, when you look at the options curve. Uh, not expecting a huge move up here. I think we could bounce around from about the 2855-ish uh, level on the S&P cash to maybe a little higher than we're at now. Um, maybe we get up to 2,900. I suspect that we kind of get back and retest this level in a handful of days, maybe by next Wednesday next week, uh, setting up a run into uh, the uh, end of next week. One of the reasons why is I've figured out how much more money IPOs are going to suck out of this market next uh, week. You know, generally, uh, we get a bunch of IPOs come out about mid-month, and they, yeah, maybe they raise a billion, billion and a half dollars for a bunch of uh, companies that you've never heard of, and they go off, and maybe in 10 years you'll find out that uh, they had a cure for cancer. But a, a lot of speculative companies, and you don't hear a lot about them, they raise maybe a, a hundred million or maybe 200 million. Uh, they couldn't go borrow that money from a bank because they do have something that's probably – got a one out of chin chance of ever uh, making a dime. Uh, but if it does make a dime, those dimes are going to be billions. So a lot of uh, IPO stuff out there, just stuff you never really pay a lot of attention to. And maybe it goes somewhere, maybe it does not, but it's smaller stuff, 100 million, 200 million, a lot of 50 millions. Uh, but uh, what we have now is another 5 billion next week. Uh, after 12 billion this week. So we continue to see a huge drain, as I suspect a lot of people think that they're getting to the cash register at the end. Uh, a lot of this movement over the last day or two uh, from the break off the high may be options expiration related. I think it certainly is. Um, I didn't think that was uh, we'd get as much of a bounce in the afternoon as we got today. But I do think that we could consolidate out around in this area, maybe eh, 15 points lower than we're at right now on the S&P cash, maybe 15 points higher on the S&P cash. But I think it's going to take a little while to digest this pullback. Uh, what I would like to see uh, in, in my dreams is uh, that the market kind of slowly sells off into next Wednesday. A lot of people get uh, hyper short this market, and then we get a big, big rally maybe Thursday or Friday next week after those IPOs are done, because that's kind of the windows kind of shut for May now. Uh, going into vacation periods, you don't get a lot of IPOs over the summer, or you certainly get a whole lot less. There may be a couple more come by, but I don't think it's going to, uh, the, the kind of $5 billion and well, this week, $12 billion that literally got sucked out of the market. Um, and when we talk about those numbers, remember, that's what the Fed was pulling out every single month, you know, or now is uh, $20 billion a month. So we're awful close to that already for IPOs. Most of these companies aren't going to make any money anytime soon. Of course, uh, Uber uh, came out uh, today, and last I looked, eh, it's trading a buck lower than its IPO price. Got down to 42 bucks. Uh, but these guys did everything in the world to get the thing out the door, and that's always a bit scary. Of course, Lyft not looking that good since it's IPO, uh, and I, probably some fairly good reasons for it. Last night, 
uh, in committee in San Francisco, the birthplace of Uber and Lyft, they're talking about massive and more massive taxes, uh, as you should in, in California. You should tax literally everything until it's gone. That's always the way to prosperity. Uh, just being a little bit of cynical there. Uh, but certainly they're already looking at that. Other cities, now that it's become public and it's got all this money, everybody's kind of looking at them going, hey, maybe that's, maybe that Uber looked like a taxi, but you know, now that I kind of squint at it, kind of looks like a piggy bank. And we can get a lot of money from those guys. Uh, anyway, uh, Uber uh, bought off a lot of the malcontents uh, by giving them up to $24,000 uh, if they've been driving for them for a long time, uh, a lot of them are just going to get a thousand or two thousand bucks, which is still a lot for someone that maybe makes an extra five hundred bucks a month uh, driving for Uber uh, or Lyft. So a lot of these guys kind of stayed away. You didn't see the mass uh, protests that some at uh, Uber were talking about. Uh, it is problematic, though, and that is that. Uh, they did something for a while that drove costs incredibly lower. And the question is whether or not they're not going to end up being higher uh, than the old cab system. Uh, and uh, a lot of these drivers have quit uh, Uber and Lyft in the last few months because they really tightened it up. They wanted their books to look as absolutely as good as they could going into the IPOs. That's generally a bad sign for the forward side of the IPO because then they have to go back and fix those and adapt to market conditions, not just kind of uh, be able to push people around for a couple of months and get into that. Uh, we'll have uh, the Tech Insider. I had about, I, I think I had more calls or emails about talking about fuel cells uh, than I've ever had on that Tech Insider segment on anything else. Uh, so we'll do the first segment on uh, fuel cells uh, instead of batteries uh, for electric vehicles and other things. Uh, and we'll talk a lot more about that, maybe the future. Uh, I think a lot of people that saw that saw the articles out earlier um, over the weekend and this week about BMW and, and the German manufacturers getting together with the uh, Japanese and uh, Korean manufacturers for fuel cells. So we'll, we'll probably we'll talk about why and how that's changed, and um, you know that fuel cells pretty much deliver everything uh, that you uh, go to and get from Walmart. We'll tell you how that actually works, uh, and some of the other applications. But uh, kind of the Reader's Digest version of fuel cells uh, today with Tom O'Brien. Uh, anyway, we've had a nice little bounce. We haven't quite gone. Or we're certainly at the level of trying to go positive on the day, down two points in the S&P cash. But um, again, uh, I'm not a big fan of thinking it's the end of the world for tariffs, uh, but I do think that we're going to get a nice pullback, maybe even into the end of the month. It's going to set up some great buys uh, for the summer. So uh, I'll be talking more about that and, and other things. you got plenty of time to give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfn.com. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. On this day in 1894, wireless radio is born. They didn't call it that. They called it Hertz waves back then. Uh, Marconi sends a radio wave three quarters of a mile. Three years later, the Marconi company, uh, company will successfully communicate a ship to shore over a distance of 12 miles. Marconi's work leads to commercialization and proliferation of most of the radio technologies we know today. Uh, back then, um, they actually used something that was about the akin to a spark plug. Uh, and there was only one frequency for that. Uh, basically, it worked like lightning. And if any lightning came up, it uh, made it very hard to use uh, radio waves. And they used that for a while. Um, and, of course, uh, eventually they went to AM radio, uh, which um, made it a lot better. Uh, and actually you had a lot of different frequencies, and they figured out that the uh, height of uh, various uh, parts of the atmosphere would reflect radio, so you had to change the frequencies during the day to reach people well, almost all the way around the world. Uh, but uh, radio was the computer of uh, that early, around 1900 area. Uh, fortunes were made on it. Uh, the biggest company uh, that you, if you want to think about Apple and, and uh, um, Netflix and all those was one company. It was called Motorola. And their claim to fame wasn't building radios. It was building a, ra a power supply that you could plug in the wall that normally you'd put a lamp into that would run your big giant radio that looked like the size of a car engine. Uh, not exactly sure why all those things had to be massive, but people loved good-looking radios made out of wood that were the size of a Rockola um, uh, at their local diner in the 50s. People liked big things back then, probably because they didn't have a lot of stuff to put in their houses. But uh, uh, Motorola, the biggest thing in the world, and of course, uh, FM radio about 1933, uh, and uh, yeah. Very interesting part of scientific literature. Uh, 
Tesla himself, uh, a big engineer, uh, was playing with radio maybe a couple of years before Marconi uh, actually sent his signal. Had a fairly good design, uh, but uh, was more interested in power generation uh, than radio. He thought it was a little weird uh, and uh, went on. But uh, pretty much they had the math figured out for radio in about 18... 60, 1865. It took another 30 years to actually get it to work uh, on a commercial basis like they did with Marconi. Everybody, uh, of course, had a Marconi representative uh, at different locations. But of course, once you didn't have to have wires everywhere, uh, it dropped the cost of uh, sending uh, communications by about 90%, uh, you know, and uh, the uh, rest of the Western electric kind of uh, sending Morse code down wires had to change. But uh, a very interesting technology change, kind of the real first one that was well documented. Uh, and uh, some, certainly something we can learn from for trading technology these days. Uh, first question out the day is... Um, We've been talking about double repo patterns and how many of these stocks just fell off the side of the cliff uh, going up into those double repo patterns. Question from Greg in Portland is, does this work in reverse? And the answer is yes. You want, you want something like 10 to 15 days, although I've seen them go as far as 20 days. Uh, then, of course, in fact, let's uh, do this. Let's go ahead and pull up uh, the art of timing the trade charts. Uh, but... Um, it is one of the better patterns out here when you've got a lot of what I call hang time in the market. Um, did I have, I think maybe I had some uh, that were at the bottoms. So why don't we want to look at that? Uh, where were they at? Oh, there they are. And I had a handful of them. Maybe there is one in this that I'm looking at. Uh, okay. Uh, not gonna be that one. Maybe it's this one. Uh, nope. I had some, uh, a couple of them at the lows the other day. I don't know if this is the list in them. So we can take a look. Uh, see no not that one not that one i'll have to go back and look of course i kind of look for those at lows more than i do at highs but uh we shall see anyway uh, the answer is uh, a definitive yet yes and uh of course most of these patterns that came from joe dinapoli he was a back then equities and early 80s equities didn't move that much. Everybody wanted the action of commodities. So it's a very good pattern to learn. I think his book's about 180 bucks on, uh, on uh, Amazon. Uh, but uh, interesting guy. Um, did a lot of work uh, for uh, ABCs and confluence levels uh, that I use today. Um, very interestingly, though, uh, he has a bunch of stuff, and I always say, you know, I can program that, and he says it can't be programmed, it, and then I can program it, and he kind of like goes away. I don't know what he's doing over these days, but he's certainly not really receptive to the fact that I can pretty much program the stuff that he talks about. I think maybe he didn't want that many people knowing that it can be done mechanically. He's always had a theory that if you can program it, it'll eventually go away. And if it got too popular, it may not work anymore. Everybody would adapt to it, but a fairly standard uh, pattern out there. Um, again, I think that we could have a bigger pullback uh, into uh, the end of the month. And while we may have a little bit of a reversal today, I wouldn't get too excited about it. I think we could get enough people that we could get a short squeeze in the next Friday, maybe starting Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday next week 
on a little bit more of a pullback. And again, I don't see the drain on the market stopping any time before next week for those IPOs. So we're going to have to have more selling. And the stocks that are probably performing the worst, um, probably going to continue to perform fairly badly until people don't need cash anymore. Uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. I will look for more of those double repo patterns in the near future, Greg, and we'll show them off too. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, we're going to break already. And uh, we've got plenty of time. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. of least resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, got a question. Look at IBM. We haven't done that for a while. Not brought up a lot. So we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, yeah, like I said, this thing probably looking like a magnet about 125, 127. Looks to me like where uh, IBM will eventually pull back. You had a nice gap up on earnings last time. I think that was only because everybody was way too short. Uh, the stock, uh, not much shorting going on except this gap down on the 17th of April. Uh, everybody started shorting it, but they're in a winning position. 
I don't see them getting out anytime soon. But uh, about 125, 127 probably uh, where that's coming back. And like I said, I think we can probably have maybe some sideways action, maybe even a little pop into expiration next week. Uh, and then in a perfect world, if I was looking to put on some long-term positions, uh, a nice light volume retrace into the uh, three-day weekend at the end of this month may be one of the better longer-term setups uh, that we will have. I like it, especially since uh, everybody's been assuming the trade deal is five minutes away. I would much rather trade with them not thinking that and not pricing that in and uh, then be surprised when it actually does happen than to be surprised when it doesn't happen and the bottom falls out. I've seen better. What's the name of that song? I've seen better days. Seen many plays. I've seen better days. And the bottom dropped out. Maybe someone will remind me of that song. I did. I know the lyrics. I can't remember. Maybe it was a one-hit wonder. I'll look it up during the break. Uh, we'll look at some other stuff going on here soon. But uh, we'll see how some of the bigger stocks reacted. Uh, and then we'll uh, get into looking at, if I can find it here, I had it earlier. Let's move this around so I can get to it a little easier. There it is. Um, we'll look at uh, the options curve uh, for yesterday. And, and did I get that? Okay, Thursday. I don't know which one of these is supposed to be all Thursday, but I'll do all of them. Um, Netflix down pretty much to where it should have. You got it spiked right back in the gap up. That was April 16th's gap. Came up on 18.7 million shares. You hit it yesterday with 5.8 million shares. Hit it again today with 4.1 million shares. No, it wasn't by Yoko Ono. Oh, okay. Anyway, uh, you know, that's a pretty good sign out here that 360 is probably going to hold for a little while. Um, again, just because you have a bottom doesn't mean it's going higher. just means it's not going lower, at least for the moment. Um, everybody, I think, when you say it's uh, you've got a bottom, assumes a V bottom and not kind of a U bottom. I'm kind of expecting that maybe we get kind of a U bottom, we pop a little bit, and everybody gets a little bearish going back into the summer. Uh, and maybe that sets up some really good buys, but don't see a lot in here right now that says that there's any trend or even a reverse trend that has stopped, started so far. Only, um, it's kind of like uh, you cut, you start bleeding. It didn't suddenly like you feel like you can run a marathon just because you're you're not bleeding anymore. And I think that's kind of what we're at here. We've had kind of a well, at least I'm not going to die today on this beach. Um, so uh, continue to look at it that way. Uh, to, to what else do we have? We looked at Netflix. Um, we'll see how everybody probably wanting to run back into Microsoft as soon uh, as it gave a hint that anybody even thought maybe that we had a low. Uh, you did uh, kind of bounce a little bit back into the trading range on Microsoft today up on, uh, let's call it 19 million shares. Um, that's compared to being down yesterday on 27 million shares and 36 million shares the day before it and 24 million shares the day before it. So a weak volume bounce uh, doesn't negate a downtrend in this stock yet. Uh, but like I said, we bounce around about 125 or so for the week. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see this uh, expire like 127.50. Um, on options expiration. And again, 85% of the time, uh, the low of Wednesday, uh, this market's going to close, at least on the S&P cash, it's going to close above that level. So, you know, we're kind of right there already. So there isn't a lot of extra movement. Uh, and we talked about uh, to, 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 uh, what the option curve actually looked like. Uh, pretty definitively uh, looks uh, like this is fairly close. Um, is that right? No, that's an S&P 500. We wanted the SPY. Yeah, that's a SPY. 
Um, let's zoom in here a little bit more. Uh, was pretty much around 285 on the spies. Let me get that to say. So we're at 286.37 right now. Now, normally what you want to do is find out where the options cross. Uh, and there will always be a few more short sellers than uh, or people that are buying it for downside protection. Then there will be people buying calls, just the way it is. Uh, put call ratio is almost always above 50. And that's because people buy insurance. Uh, just like you buy it for your house, and you hope it doesn't burn to the ground, uh, but it is a hedge. So there's almost always a positive bias of about 20 points on the S&P cash, maybe a 40. So you, know, you talk about maybe two or three points on the spies. That would get you up to about uh, 287, 288. Now, this will change and track uh, as we go in next week. But I didn't think there was a lot of reasons to stay short or to go long into the morning until we got a signal. Now, there was a nice interday uh, swing for everybody, but it wasn't uh, the end of the world. We're off about five points on the SP cash. Like I said, probably a lot of back and fill. Uh, certainly, maybe if they get those IPOs out on Thursday, maybe uh, that means that the end of the selling will uh, come out on Wednesday. Uh, so that they can buy those new IPOs. And finally, we have yet another uh, kind of end of the push that really is sucking all the oxygen out of the room uh, of the market for the a moment, much less uh, uh, a lot of people banging the drums on uh, tariff issues, which um, kind of they're betting. Uh, certainly, they're going to get them. I don't know that they've gone into effect yet. I know that there have been a lot of... Uh, uh, talk about it. Question is whether or not we actually walk into money or into uh, the futures Sunday night and uh, there's been a breakthrough or something else. I know that uh, the uh, negotiations are over for today, but uh, I saw something that said that they're going to continue over the weekend. So we'll see. Um, but uh, more of a gamble uh, than intelligent speculation. I don't like uh, to go in uh, to Fed meetings or what the Chinese-U.S. relationship's going to be on Monday. Uh, so mostly cash at this moment. I have one long-term short position, which seems to be doing uh, just fine for me. So we'll continue on that. And I got some downside protection, uh, but uh, that's about it. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Eh, just uh, looking up some stuff here during the break. Um, but uh, that's about it. Anyway, uh, off one point now on the S&P cash. Been bouncing around about a four-point range. Ticks hitting about uh, one, one and a half points um, every time I get an update on the S&P. Dow's up 11. Is that right? Let's update this just to make sure. And yeah, let's call it 12. Uh, NASDAQ still uh, kind of the weak, eh, the weakest, along with Russell. Uh, Russell's down three tenths of a percent, along with the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's down 25. Russell's off five. Uh, so we'll continue to take a look at it. We've seen some swings to the low. Like I said, I think we get kind of a retest uh, on on this level probably next week, maybe on Wednesday if we're lucky, and setting up. Everybody knows how much I love. Uh, trading options on the last day of expiration if we've got something set up. It only happens maybe once or twice a year, but man, uh, you can buy a lot of 10 and 25 cent options that go to two bucks uh, if you can catch it correctly. Uh, so uh, kind of compressing a lot of risk and reward in a single day. Normally, I like to see that we've got uh, some time for options to pay off, but uh, when you've got one day left, Man, you, you basically have some incredibly small bets that can turn off to be incredibly huge payouts. Uh, kind of like uh, that 64-1 uh, to 1 horse in the Kentucky Derby last week. Don't watch horse racing. Went to one, and that was uh, at Exarban, which is Nebraska spelled backwards. The only thing I remember about that day, I think I lost 10 bucks. That's the last horse race I went to. I think uh, since I actually worked in stables, I never much thought much about how uh, horses, except the bad thing that came out of them, at least the thing I disliked. Uh, anyway, uh, looking at some other uh, stocks out here, just seeing what else. A uh, 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 question about Apple. Uh, so we'll go into that. Again, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, Apple, uh, of course, had one of the better patterns out here for your double repo. Uh, this thing continued to pretty much uh, stay above that since back on uh, April 1st. Um, you had your closes below it, closes above it, uh, and, of course, closed above it on the 6th. The next day was down, and that's kind of where everything really starts to fall apart, uh, and that's generally a good place once you get that cl so solid close, you just want it to stay below the three by three displaced moving average. Good example out here. This may be it. I, in fact, I didn't look at Apple's options yet today, or if I did, I forgot. Um, yeah, that one shows about straight 200 bucks. So keep an eye on that one. You know, four bucks, is that enough for me to play? It isn't unless it's the last day of uh, options expiration. I can get something like a 25 cent or 50 cent option 
uh, for a potential $4 payout. But uh, those are some of the ones that we'll be looking for next week. But if, if, if this is a, when you look at this kind of very much, I kind of call it a goblet, uh, not quite a V formation. Those are, those are dead, generally dead nuts on. Uh, but when you get this kind of nice bowl formation, kind of a nice, uh, easy move into options expiration. So if we continue to see this thing hover in the low 190s next week uh, for options expiration, if this does not change, uh, it may be a nice little pop for Apple back into Friday's expiration close a week from today. Uh, what else do we have out here? Checking the email. Got a lot of stuff coming in. Uh, okay, got it. Da, 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 okay. Okay, what else is going on out here? Um, in FLX, in Netflix, uh, we talked about that one already. Uh, let's talk about some of the other ones. ORCL, Oracle. Taking a look at that one. Now you kind of, this one is one of these that I would say may have a, a better setup for a short coming up. Um, you closed under the three by three, you're actually pushing back up over it now. And the next close underneath that would say that this would be severely weakened. Um, you know, this thing doesn't trade very far, but certainly could go back down to 5150 on any kind of weakness in the next few days. So you, that one may be the weakest one that I've looked at so far. Um, and, uh, Amazon. Uh, oh, if I can actually type it, type it correctly. A uh, M Z N, right? A M Z N. Okay. Had my senior moment here. Um, again, a lot of these double repo patterns opened up. Um, you generally don't want to go long these things until they close back above the three by three because they tend to come up there and hit them and then pull back. And we could see something like that happen the first couple of days of next week, and then it kind of pull back down, maybe where it's at now. This one also might have a nice setup. Let's take a look at uh, AMZN and on the option curve. Uh, and this one always tends to be, I uh, have a little bit more on it. I wouldn't you know, 1850 is kind of the very downside prediction for Amazon with its options curve. So that, you know, maybe worst case, you probably have already seen the low in for it for the next week. Most, more than likely, about an 80% chance. Uh, to do what else do we have? I wanted to look at. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Let's go back here and do this. Um, okay, not on that. Oh, well, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to look into Monday and next week's uh, options, or not options, but uh, earnings. And we had take two on Monday, T-W-T-T-W-O. Um, this one is very interesting going into options, or not, uh, into earnings on Monday after the bell. Because this thing is at pretty much the maximum resistance level. Um, and some of the things that are going on in Congress, actually just last night and today, and in China, may put a lot of weakness for companies that actually do a lot of business, both in China and with young folk, youngins, utes. That's what it is, utes. So if there are a lot of Utes using stuff, uh, the freshman senator from Missouri uh, has put a forth a bill that's got some traction, uh, and that is something they call loot boxes, uh, where you buy additional things uh, to play the game. And if that hit, a lot of these gaming companies that have been kind of skimming off uh, young kids for a while may be severely hurt. Um, going to be interesting on this, but a couple of uh, headwinds hitting uh, 
game uh, electronic gaming here in the near future. Be back in a minute. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And hopefully we brought it up, uh, but uh, yes, that was Citizen King. I've had better days, and the bottom dropped out. <laughs> uh, I like that song. The one hit wonder, but that was pretty good. And uh, I had a comment about uh, 90s music, and I thought, well, apparently they didn't watch or see Dave Matthews in the last part of that, because, man, probably still one of the best musicians out there. Uh, and certainly the music absolutely brilliantly recorded. Uh, even uh, and performed on stage. I don't think he's doing much anymore. Uh, as we get in the last couple of minutes of the day, uh, reminder, uh, we'll be doing uh, uh, the Tech Insider hour with, a, or half hour, with Tom O'Brien at the bottom of next hour. We'll be talking about uh, hydrogen fuel cells, fuel cells in general, uh, why they're such a big deal and why uh, they're in the news this week. A couple of different times. Uh, but uh, a very interesting technology. We'll talk about it compared to batteries uh, and other things. So uh, kind of uh, kind of interesting technology. Uh, as we uh, close the day up, we're now up five points on the S&P Cash, up 70 points on the Dow. NASDAQ's still down 12, and the Russell's off three. Um, 
when we take a look at the volume today, it had always been kind of uh, lightish compared to the last two days. We're doing about 5 billion shares uh, with an hour to go. So that sets up for maybe about 500 million, maybe 600 million lighter than the last couple of days. And that's going to get you enough for a little bit, I think, of a, of a bounce. And uh, I'm hoping that we get one more pullback with even lighter volume to set up options expiration next week. And maybe a nice little sell off into the end of the month that sets up a great buying opportunity. We'll be back to you on Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. See you at 3.30 with Tom O'Brien.